Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Yvette. No, I won't be able to make it tonight. I'm on my way to London. That's right, Angel, London. Someone committed murder there, and I'm supposed to upset the defense. Yeah, he claims he knows nothing about it, because at the time, he was in a fog. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the babbling brooks. It's a funny thing about women. You never know how they're going to react. I suppose that's true of men, too, but I haven't been interested in doing research there. Give me a girl every time, especially in a city like London. Now, you take Christina Draper, for example. And uh, if you're going to take her, you'll have to work real fast. Chris is the luscious blonde getting out of the lift on the eighth floor of the showroom. One glance and you can tell immediately this is a girl who believes in standing on her own two feet. And who can blame her? Just look at those ankles. Who is it? It's Chris, Robert. Open up. Darling, what a pleasant surprise. I was just thinking of you. Mm, not that. What of honor, my darling? Have you got it for me? You don't believe in wasting time, do you, Mr. Vaughan? Eh? I remember when you couldn't wait to kiss me. Oh, I still can't. I'm mad about you, darling. Mm, you're pretty cute. <laughs> I don't understand you, Chris. Not much you don't. You'd cut my throat in a minute if you thought it would do you any good. Oh, now, dearest. Don't worry. Doesn't bother me. It's funny, isn't it? Down at the embassy, they think I'm the original hard-hearted Hannah. If they only knew, huh? They mustn't, my love. It would be disastrous for our cause if they did. Incidentally, I just heard from Moscow. They're tremendously pleased with... Skip it. Well, I thought you'd be interested in knowing your efforts on behalf of world peace are appreciated. Let's not kid each other. I'm a traitor. Oh, Chris, please. Well, isn't that what they call people who sell out their own country? Darling, you mustn't talk like that. After all, your motive... Yeah, how about my motive? I'm in love with a common turn big shot. Do you think they'll take that into consideration before they hang me? Oh, really, Chris, I don't know what's come over you. You're displaying horrible taste. I apologize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're an angel. Now, what have you got for me? The minutes of a conference between Colonel Logan and Sir Ralph Gordon. May I? You mind if I help myself to a drink? I've uh, got some Irish there. That's fine. Can I fix you one? Yes, please. Chris. Chris is wonderful. I see they discussed a new tank. Yeah, the F-7. Where are they testing it? Back in the States. Aberdeen. Here you are. Thank you, Pet. Would there be any plans in England? Colonel Logan has a set. Mm-hmm. I've got to have a copy. I'll get you a camera. Uh-uh. Include me out. Now, darling, don't you want to help the cause of world peace? And I do that by presenting you with the plans for the F-7? Of course. Well, I must be stupid. I don't see it. Well, if we had known in advance that the Americans were going to use germ warfare in Korea... Now, honey, this is Chris, remember? You're not writing articles for the Daily Worker. <laughs> My mistake. But you will get me a copy of those plans. Mm. I don't think I'd better. The, the heat is on. Scotland Yard just nabbed a coding clerk in the British Foreign Office. Oh, he was a bungler. What about Fuchs? And you claim you love me, hmm? If you don't know it by now. Ah, oh, well, then you can't refuse me this. Oh... Now, stop it, Robert. Oh, you know, I'm mad about you, Chris. No. After this is over, I'll take you out of this beastly country. We'll go to Vienna, Moscow, anywhere you want. What do you say, darling? I, I ought to have my head examined. But you'll do it, hmm? I'll do it. Get me a camera and I'll take care of it tonight. <laughs> I uh, beg your pardon, miss. Only Alfie Brooks. I thought everyone was gone. No, I'm I'm working late, Brooks. Yeah, so I notice. Is Colonel Logan here? No, he, uh, he's he's away for the weekend. Well, I thought I'd scrub these floors. Would you like me to start over? 
Hey, that's a smasher. Hmm? Oh, that camera. My brother brought back one like that from Germany. Oh, it took lovely pictures. Yes, I'm sure. But uh, ain't that against regulations? Huh? To bring a camera in here? Well, I'm going down to Devonshire for the weekend. I didn't want to have to go home again to pick it up. Ah, I see. Oh, I hope you won't say anything to Colonel Logan about this. Well, I don't know, Miss Draper. Now, you wouldn't want to get me in trouble, would you, Brooks? Of course not. I know what trouble is. I got my share. Why, well, it takes a blooming fortune to keep a body alive. You know, the pound ain't worth what it used to be. Could you use five? Oh, I hope you don't think I was hinting for money. Of course oh, not. Not that I couldn't use it, you understand. Imagine, two shillings now for a pint of bitters. Yeah, and this ought to buy you a barrel. Oh, oh, thank you, Miss Draper. You're a real lady. And you won't say anything to Colonel Logan? Ah, you don't have to worry, miss. Ask anyone. When Alfie Brooks gives his word, it's like a bond. I've forgotten about it already. Anyone for Dot? I say, anyone for Dot? Hey, looking for someone, Governor? Uh, yeah, Alfie Brooks. I was told I could find him at the Fox and Beagle. Uh, what's Brooks done now? Well, what makes you think he's done anything? Oh, I know Alfie. Hey, Alfie, gent here wants to see you. Uh, what gent? Hello, Brooks. My name is Mike Waring. I wonder if you could spare me a few minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, Governor. I'm playing darts. Well, this won't take much time. Oh, hey, bartender, could we have a couple of pints here? Thank you. You want to sit at this table here? All right. <laughs> now, uh... You've got your blooming nerve... Now here, take a look at my credentials. Well, you ain't a blooming copper. Huh? No, not exactly. But Colonel Logan suggested I talk to you. Oh, I ain't nothing. If somebody's pinched something, well, it wasn't me. No, I'm sure it wasn't. I was just wondering if you ever saw anyone in the Colonel's office after hours. Oh, uh, like who, for example? Well, like any of the men, or Miss Draper, the Colonel's secretary. You mean there's spies at work? What makes you ask that? I go to the cinema. I see how those fellows work. If I thought there was some hanky-panky going on... There I... is. Cool. Uh, what do you know? Well, the question is, what do you know? Not a ruddy thing. But I'll give it some thought, Governor. If I come up with anything, you leave it to Alfie Brooks to know what to do. What's the trouble, Chris? You look nervous. I am. Maybe this will calm your fevered brow. I tell you, they suspect something, Robert. I'm being followed. You're imagining things, darling. Then why did they send for Waring? Michael Waring? You know him? I met him in Vienna two weeks ago and in Paris last week. Well, who is he? By avocation, he's a private detective called the Falcon. But according to my information, he's been recalled to temporary duty with American intelligence. I knew it. Now, Chris, I tell you... This... <laughs> Are you expecting someone? No. Who is it? Porter, Mr. Vaughan. Where will I go? Oh, really, darling, you do have a window. I'll, I'll be in there. As you like. Just a moment. Hi, Governor. Who the devil are you? Oh, uh, Alfie Brooks is the name. Is Miss Draper here? I'm afraid you're making a mistake. <laughs> Not half. I followed her. So you're the one? Uh-huh. Uh, can I come in? Perhaps you'd better. Sit down. Uh, thanks. Cool, huh? Oh, this is a lovely place. What do they hit you for a flat like this? Why, you think you're renting one? Ah, you never know. Someday I might be in the chips myself. And if you are, it'll be through me, eh? Ah, now that's what I like. A gentleman who comes right to the point. What's on your mind? Well, a bloke named Mike Waring was around to see me the other day. Yeah, wanted to know if... I can a... imagine what he wanted to know. I didn't tell him about Miss Draper. You see, I gave her my word. And naturally, you wouldn't break it. Naturally. Unless, of course, there was conditions I got no control over. Like, uh, well, uh, if there was anky-panky going on. What do you mean by anky-panky? Uh, suppose, for the sake of argument, Miss Draper was a spy. Oh, not that I think she is, you understand. I understand. Oh, well, naturally, it would be my duty to tell what I know. I'm a patriot, I am. That's obvious. Of course, I'd hate to make trouble for Miss Draper, and there's no reason why I should. If you're paid. <laughs> like I said before, Mr. Vaughan, I like a gent who don't beat around the bush. How much do you want? Suppose we say 
500 pounds. How do I know this won't be the first of many such calls? No, I'm no pig, Mr. Vaughan. Ask anyone what knows Alfie Brooks. They'll tell you he's a reasonable man. Well, that raises a problem. I don't have that much on me. That's all right. I trust you. <laughs> you might be making a mistake. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You see, I can always go back to Mr. Waring. Yeah. He's my insurance policy. A sort of Lloyd's of London, eh? Uh-huh. Where do you live? 13 Oakley Square. That's in Camden Town. I'll be by at 3.30. In the morning? Yes, I have a previous engagement. You won't fail me. Oh, don't worry, Brooks. Like you, my word is my bond. That's all I ask. Well, cheer up, mate. Hey, give my best to Miss Draper. I will. Well, was I imagining things? Apparently not. What are we going to do? Well, first I'm going to have a drink and meditate, my darling. Obviously, I can't permit myself to be blackmailed. So there's only one solution. No. I'm afraid it's yes, darling. What do you think I told Brooks I'd be there at 3.30? I have no idea. Well, that's the time I expect to be with your employer. Colonel Logan? Yes. Ironic, isn't it, that the American military attaché should be my alibi? But if you're going to be with the colonel... I can't take care of our Mr. Brooks. Then who will? You. You're crazy. What's the trouble, darling? Something wrong with my logic? Everything. You don't think I'm going to commit murder? Oh, really, Chris, at times you show your bourgeois background. I've done a lot for you, Robert. But I won't kill anyone. Why not? Indirectly, my dear, you've been responsible for thousands of deaths. That's a lie. Did you ever think of the end results of all the work you've done for us? Those bits of paper you brought us ultimately meant the death of some American boy. No. And, Donna, you've got to face the facts. You're a big girl now. Here we are. What's that? A memento I've been keeping for just such an occasion. It's a cufflink. You'll notice the initials... M.W. M.W. Didn't you say Mike Waring was in London? Yes. Well, after you take care of Mr. Brooks, you're to drop this near the body. I won't do it. And I say you will. What is your drink, pet? I'd hate to be late for my appointment with Colonel Logan. So much depends on it. Are you in a hurry? Are you in enough of a hurry to risk your life? Statistics show that by far the largest percentage of all fatal highway accidents are caused by drivers who go over the speed limit. Speeding on the highway gets you nowhere except into trouble. The faster you drive, the less control you have over your car. The longer it takes you to stop, the greater strain you put on your tires, and the more likely you are to skid if the roads are bad. Weigh all these facts against the few minutes you may save by driving too fast, and then slow down. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, I say what you don't know will never hurt you. But try selling that to Alfie Brooks. He had no idea the little surprise party Robert Vaughan and Chris Draper were preparing for him. Meanwhile, I had a dinner date with Chris's boss, Colonel Logan, at the Savoy. I don't know if the fuel shortage had anything to do with it, but uh, we ate by candlelight, so that made two more of us in the dark. Some more wine, Mike? Is that what it is? I couldn't tell in this light. <laughs> I'm surprised at you, Mike. Don't you know there's nothing more romantic than eating by candlelight? Well, how can you expect me to be romantic with a colonel in the army? Now, if you were that blonde secretary of yours... Chris? Forget it. She's spoken for. Well, just the same, I think I'll have to talk with her tomorrow. What for? Well, I've covered everybody else on your staff. It's time I got around to her. Wasting your time, soldier. You might as well suspect me. <laughs> Don't think I haven't. <laughs> what I like about you boys and in intelligence. You wouldn't even trust your... Your... What's the trouble, Colonel? I don't know. I'll... Here, I'll get your doctor. No, no, but you're sick. No, it'll pass. I feel better already. Well, let me take you home. No, no, it's, it's nothing, Mike. Just a touch of indigestion. Well, just the same, I'm going to see you home. I'll have the way to call a cab. No, no, I, I've got a date. Well, let me keep it for you. I guarantee she won't be disappointed. No, but you will. It's a heat. Oh, yeah, although you and Vaughn might hit it off at that. What Vaughn might that be? Robert. Is he in England? Don't tell me you know him. I certainly do. I met him in Vienna two weeks ago. He's working for the Reds. He's what? Sure, he's a big shot in the party. <laughs> I'll bet he's behind all these shenanigans. Mike, you've been seeing too many movies. Look, I tell you, Colonel... Tell me tomorrow. Vaughn and I have got a date to play chess. And if I'm going to keep it, I'll have to move. I'll be seeing you, fellow. All 
right, Colonel. Your move. You're going to regret this, Vaughn. Suppose I move my bishop here. I believe that's checkmate. Now, how the devil did I miss that? <laughs> You're much too good, Colonel. I resign. How about another game? No, no, I promised my doctor I'd be in bed by one. Oh, but it can't be more than 12. Well, if it isn't, someone better notify Big Ben. That's three, striking now. Hmm. I can't imagine where the time went. Would you like me to drive you home? No, no, don't bother. I'll get a cab. Oh, ridiculous. And my Nash here, it'll take us no time at all. Really, Vaughn, I hate to put you in any trouble. Oh, forget it. Just let me get my coat. Well, I certainly appreciate that. My pleasure. I'll be right out. Operator, let me have Savoy, 4112, please. Hello? Is that you, Chris? Yes. Robert here. Just wanted to know everything is proceeding according to plan, my dear. I'm leaving now with Colonel Logan. You have that cufflink I gave you? Yes, but... Uh, good. I... I should be at the Colonel's flat at 3.30, at which time you should be knocking on Mr. Brooks' door. Listen, darling... I wish I, I had time to, but it might throw our schedule off. Good hunting, darling. Half a mile, I'll be right there. Hello, Brooks. What? Miss Draper? Mm-hmm. I was expecting Mr. Vaughan. He couldn't make it, so he sent me in his place. Uh, I don't like that, miss. It seems to me when you make an agreement... It couldn't you... be helped, Brooks. Now, may I come in? All right. You got it? Yes, I've got it. Where's your wife? I sent her to our Mars. I knew Mr. Vaughan wouldn't want anyone around while we was conducting business. That was smart. <laughs> you leave it to Brooks, miss. I'm a bloke who... You're a bloke who what? what? <laughs> What's the idea of the gun? What's usually the idea? He we... <laughs> mustn't joke with me. I'm not joking, Brooks. <laughs> Look, we can forget about the money. Can we? Sure. Well, what do I want with 500 pounds? I wouldn't know what to do with it anyway. You tell Mr. Vaughan for me. Ah! Primrose, will you phone the yard and ask them to send over the lorry? I'll get it. Yes? I'd like to see Alfie Brooks, please. I think we can oblige you. Come in. Thanks. There he is. Oh. You care for a closer look? Yes, if you don't mind. I insist. Well, it's not very pretty. What murder is? I, uh, I don't believe I caught your name. It's Mike Waring. Oh, how are you? I'm Heathcliff. Heathcliff? Now, if you're going to make any bad jokes about Wuthering Heights, I'd rather you didn't. You chaps, carry on, will you? I do. I take it you're with the yard. You take it correctly. Well, I'm with American Intelligence. If you'd like to see my credentials... I'd love to. There you are. Mm-hmm. Seems to be in order. Uh, if I can help in any way... Perhaps you can. Now, what do you make of this cufflink? Well, let's see it. Oh, I'd rather you didn't, old man. But the initials on it are M.W., well, it could stand for Mike Waring. Couldn't it? Which merely proves how wrong I've been. I don't get you. Well, every time I read one of your American thrillers, I'm amused when the criminal's apprehended because he conveniently leaves behind a cufflink. But apparently truth is stranger than fiction. This is Vaughn's work. I beg your pardon? Two weeks ago in Vienna, I ran into a man named Robert Vaughn. He was in charge of Soviet security. He had an opportunity to go through my things. And it's your theory that he appropriated this cufflink at that time? Yes. Now, why should he do that? For just this purpose. Well, I'd say he was remarkably far-sighted, wouldn't you? Look, Inspector, this isn't for publication. But there was a spy at work on Colonel Logan's staff. The deceased there? Apparently. Oh, it hardly seems like the old man. After all, Brooks was just a porter. He'd be in no position to know anything. Well, he must have known something. That's why Vaughn killed him. Still, it was your cufflink we found near the body. But can't you see it's a frame? I knew you were going to say that. What? Those American pictures aren't exaggerated. Oh, don't be a fool. If I killed Brooks, why would I come back here? Doesn't the killer always return to the scene of the crime? In your case, probably to retrieve the cufflink. Oh, what's the use? When did he die? Half past three. What were you doing at that time? I was asleep. I'm afraid that isn't much of an alibi, old man. Well, I'll give you eight to five that Vaughn's isn't any better. Those are excellent odds. I think you take, I'll take you up on them. 
Primrose, be a good chap and get us a car, will you? We've got to settle a bet. Well, that's a very interesting tale, Inspector. So Mr. Waring believes I framed him, eh? I know you did, Vaughn. You're the only one who could have palmed that cufflink. And where did I have the opportunity? Two weeks ago in Vienna at the Hotel Imperial. Oh, really, old man? You're not serious? Why should I kill this, this, uh... Brooks. Uh, oh, yes. Alfie Brooks. Thank you, Inspector. Why don't you say you didn't even know the man? I didn't. Oh, come off it, Vaughn. He was working for you. Then why should I kill him? All right, maybe he wasn't. I do wish you'd make up your mind, was he or wasn't he? Look, Inspector, suppose there was someone else in that office cooperating with Vaughn and Brooks discovered it. Then suppose he tried to blackmail Vaughn. You're doing an awful lot of supposing. Then why won't you tell us what you were doing at 3.30 last night? Because I hate to involve anyone. You're bluffing. I wouldn't advise you to call me. Well, I am. The Inspector and I have a side bet on your hand. Well, I've got a full house, old man. At 3.30 last night, I was with Colonel Logan, the American attaché. You're lying. I saw the Colonel... At 8. He told me so. But he never would have stayed up till 3.30. He wasn't feeling well. I know. I drove him to his flat. We got there at 4.15. Well, I don't get it. You will. Excuse me, Inspector, you mentioned something about a wager between yourself and Mr. Waring. Yes, he staked his life on the outcome of this call. I do hope he can afford the loss. There's a price tag on almost everything. Whether you drive a shiny new 1952 model or a pre-war jalopy, you had to pay the price. And when you're driving that car, remember that speed also has its price. The price tag on speed violations last year was 15,000 killed and 500,000 injured. This year, thousands of lives can be saved if you and millions of other motorists come to the sober realization that speed is the biggest killer on the highways and resolve to slow down before you or someone else pays the price that must be paid for it. You can do your part by keeping within speed limits. At all times, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, I can't say I wasn't warned. Mama always told me not to gamble, and here I had staked my life that Robert Vaughn didn't have an alibi for the time of Brooks's murder. But there was one consolation... My luck had to change. I couldn't possibly lose two bets in a row like this. Well, what do you say, Waring? Are you satisfied now? No, he's lying, Inspector. Oh, really, old man? You couldn't possibly have been with Colonel Logan at 3.30. And suppose the Colonel bears out my story. Well, then, there was some horsing around with watches. Horsing around? <laughs> that's a new one. You mean jiggery poker? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. The Colonel wasn't wearing a watch, and Vaughn here probably doctored his own. Did I doctor Big Ben, too? Huh? The colonel called the hour to my attention as Big Ben was striking three. Oh, no. You really seem to be putting your foot in it, Mr. Waring. Well, I tell you, his alibi is a phony. Well, in England, we know a wonderful way to find out. Suppose we go over and see Colonel Logan. <laughs> I suppose that's how you do it in America, too. Huh? <laughs> Come in. Yes? I hate to disturb you, miss, but I'm Inspector Heathcliff of Scotland Yard. Yes, we've been expecting you. Well, why should you? Oh, uh, this is Mr. Waring and Mr. Vaughan. I've already had the pleasure. How are you, Miss Draper? Uh, Colonel Logan in there? Yes. Go on in. No. Oh, oh, come in, gentlemen. Say, what's going on? Sad, isn't it? I cautioned him. He just wouldn't listen. Who are you? Dr. Wilburn. What's wrong with the colonel? Oh, can't you see? He's dead. That's impossible. Oh, no. A typical coronary. They often go like that, you know. Late hours, overwork. Oh, poor guy. Well, I can assure you there was no pain. He never knew a thing. Well, kind of upsetting, isn't it, Vaughn? Hey. You claim the colonel was your alibi. He was. And how are you going to prove it? That does create a problem. If you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll make the necessary arrangements. All right, Vaughn. What have you got to say for yourself now? Well, gentlemen, I'm afraid you'll leave me no choice. I didn't kill Brooks, but I know who did. Well, why didn't you say so before? Well, after all, I am a gentleman, and where a lady is involved... A lady? Christina Draper. 
The colonel's secretary? Yes, that's right. I've been seeing a good deal of the girl. Why should that make any difference? You might let me finish. I understand she's engaged to some chap in the States. Brooks apparently found out about it and attempted to blackmail her. I don't believe it. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Chris, darling. I guess it's true what they say about people who listen at keyholes. They never hear any good about themselves. I'm sorry, my pet, but you do understand. I'm not angry, Robert. I always knew you'd cut my throat someday. But you taught me a lot, too. Like you said, my reaction to murder was distinctly middle class. Well, I'm over that now. Listen, Miss Draper. Stay out of this. Put away that gun. This doesn't concern you. This is between Mr. Vaughan and myself. Right, Robert? You're being very melodramatic, Chris. What can you expect of a woman in love? You know, I do still love you. Oh, really, darling? I guess I will as long as we both live, which isn't saying very much. I'll be seeing you, honey. No. Ah. All right, Angel. Let's have that gun. Sure. How is he, Inspector? He isn't. He's dead. And that takes care of that. All right, fellas, let's go. Kind of ironic, wasn't it, Rowing? Huh? I mean, Vaughn's alibi turning on Colonel Logan and the Colonel dying of a heart attack before he could testify. Yeah, it just proves you can't depend on anything these days. Too bad, too, because it was really a nice twist. While Vaughn was with the Colonel, Chris killed Brooks. Pretty clever. Yeah, you got to give the devil his due. He had it all planned but the ending. Well, now that it's ended, I suppose you'll be going back to the States. <laughs> and am I looking forward to seeing them again? When are you leaving? First plane out. I do wish you'd change your mind. I'd like to show you around the yard. No, thanks. I've made up my mind. And once I do, I... Excuse me, sir. But is either of you gentlemen Mr. Michael Waring? Yeah. Uh, here's cable for you, sir. It's been forwarded from your hotel. Oh, thanks. Oh, no. Bad news? Listen. Glad you're enjoying your holiday. No use coming back to New York now. It's hot as blazes. People keeling over in the streets... Understand they're doing the same in Italy, only they never get up again. Proceed immediately to Rome and find out why. Love and kisses Leon Brill. You're not going to take that. Now, what do you think? If I ignore this, Brill can have me court-martialed and shot. And if you go to Rome, you might end up the same way? Yes, ain't that a jolly prospect? Well, good night, Inspector. The Case of the Running Waters. The Case of the Running Waters. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring discovers that when in Rome, it's not always advisable to do as the Romans. Sometimes it can be murder. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Anne Burr as Chris. This program came to you from New York City. This is Fred Collins speaking.